Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Olive Tree Community Spokane. The following recording is from this week's teaching on the Parsha or portion from the Torah. You can find more details on this Parsha and the scripture being referred to in the pull down menu below. Now let's join our teacher as he shares his insights from the scriptures. So, as she read the Torah portion, and as I thought on the things that were stated, and there is so much that we can learn from these things. I just want to let everyone know, and most people do, that you know, I, as a person of the nations, I was speaking to someone the other day who said, you know, every single Spanish surname person is Sephardic. And I said, well, that may be the case. I said, I've been told many times you should take a blood test and see if you have some Jewish blood in you. As I've said to people, and I appreciate their love and desire for somehow for each of us to understand that we are Jewish, I, I said, I'm in Mashiach, I'm in Messiah, I, I'm in him. And, and really, it, it doesn't matter whether I have, and it may be with the fact that my name possibly could be Sephardic, that in 1492, not only Columbus sailed the ocean blue, but all the Jews from Spain went uh, as well later on, and that maybe there was this diaspora of uh, Spanish-speaking Jews and Hebrew-speaking Jews and so on and so forth that were spread all over the, uh, the continent. But, you know, first of all, a Orthodox rabbi will not consider me Jewish, even if I have the 80% or 90% or 100% Jewish blood. But here's the thing. I am considered and loved by the Father. And I thank him for the fact that he has called me, and I thank the Father that he has continually loved me. So I reflect on this passage in this way, being a Gentile and looking at how much the Father wanted to spend time with his people. He longed to relate to them. He he reflected on the instructions uh, given in the Torah to Israel. And I believe in the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I know some people can say, well, when you say God, that can mean any kind of thing. And that's very true. But I want to say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one, the, the one who is the creator, uh, the one who is um, above every other name. Uh, the one who has given us an ability to come to him and simply say, Abba, Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? He's given us that ability. He's given us that opportunity to have that kind of a relationship, which was talking about in the testimony, a, a relationship. It's not just a religion. Now, relationships, though, can form into a religious understanding. And obviously, we do have the faith of Abraham, the faith of Abraham, of the, of the God who called upon him. So I believe in the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm amazed at the desire, again, of our Heavenly Father to spend time with his people and how he loves and blesses them with his presence. You know, to think that we are in the presence of the Father right now. Later this evening, then, when we all are tucked away in our rooms and our homes, the presence of the Father is there. But he's looking for a people who would worship him in spirit and in truth. And at times I've been ashamed of what I have done in the presence of my Father. And yet he still calls me. He still says, come. He doesn't kick me away. So, but I, you don't know, look what I've just done. Look what I just thought. Look what I've said. And he says, I know my son. Call on me and I will show you mercy. 
Moses assembled the people to remind them of the covenant that he had made with Israel to keep Shabbat, to keep the Sabbath. That's, that's what he did here. That's what it says in this portion. He called them. He says, remember the covenant that I that he made with you about keeping the Sabbath. Now, the church, and I don't speak that negatively, but people who have not an understanding of Shabbat, and it's unfortunate that that is the case, but the church today doesn't quite see the significance of the Sabbath. It's not simply a Jewish thing. I know we want to boil it down to that sometimes, but it's not just a Jewish thing. It's not just an Old Testament thing. I only hope and pray that we will all come to see that it's a biblical call from the Creator for all that believe in Him to embrace and know the power of resting in Him by being obedient to His commandments. I would hope and each one would, of us would say that I am the first one to say that I have not kept all the commandments. I'm not proud of that. I'm not saying we should have wear that as a badge of honor, but I believe that we, we need to realize that we all have failed in some way. All have sinned and come short of the glory of the Father. The Sabbath is not the only day to worship, though, mind you. That seems to seem to spur people on when I say I desire to follow in the area of Shabbat, or I believe in Sabbath, people all of a sudden get their religious dander up and basically say, wait a second, I worship God every day. I said, well, that is good. We are to worship him every day. But yet the Father has said to honor the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. We are to worship the Creator every day of our lives. Yet he has said the Sabbath is a solemn day of rest. And in this teaching right now, and I'm not going to delve into the ramifications and nuances of the various understandings and teachings and positions of many varying Jewish and theological positions, all that's around the Sabbath. I, I wouldn't have enough time to talk about it all because there are various, I'm talking about various positions within Judaism and various positions within Christianity. And there's various positions within that group somehow that falls in the middle of Messianic understanding. Suffice it to say that the Sabbath is significant to the heart of God. That's something which I hope we here can come to an understanding on. I pray that both Jew and Gentile that believe will continually bless and thank the one who has given us the freedom to serve him. He has done great and mighty things for Israel and for all who long to be obedient to the teachings, the instructions, what is known as the Torah, the Tanakh, and the apostolic writings, which is known as the New Covenant. Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That was in John 14, 15. I like what I read about Jewish theologian Abraham Joshua Heschel, who wrote, not even the promised land is called holy. While the holiness of the land and the holiness of the festivals depends on the actions of the Jewish people, the holiness of the Shabbat preceded Israel's existence. End quote. Even if people fail to observe Shabbat, it remains holy. Shabbat is holy. And by the way, it started back in Genesis, even before it was written as a Torah command. So this is not something that just came about for a nation. It was something that came about from the heart of the creator, this idea of Sabbath. 
So I think it's important to see and understand the heart and the significance that it means to God the Father. And we need to see that Israel was blessed when they had been obedient to the Torah. We read in the Torah that this commandment is very important, especially to uh, the people of those who have believed. And, and I like what uh, one other scholar had said, and he, he wrote that it's not so much that um, the Jewish nation has hit the Sabbath, but the Sabbath has hit the Jewish nation. <laughs> That was what has held them together in a very powerful way. As I was reading one time that one of the royalty persons of England once asked one of their uh, helpers saying, why, why should I believe in God? And basically the answer that the person gave to this royal said, well, the Jews. The Jews still exist, so God has kept them together because every other group of people have pretty much almost disappeared from the face of the earth, from what we read in biblical times. So in today's body of believers known as the church, it seems that we read in the Bible, especially in the New Covenant, that, that the New Covenant and the teachings are suggestions on how we should live rather than commandments on how we should live. And I think we need to see that as commandments, not just as suggestions. It's not psychological gobbledygook, which sometimes is presented as. It's the word of God. It is what he has said uh, to us. So what did Yeshua say about the commandments? Well, we find him debating the Torah scholars in the passage of uh, Mark, I do believe, uh, 12, 28 through 34, it says, one of the Torah scholars came and heard them debating, seeing that Yeshua had answered them well and asked him, what commandment is first of all? What is the greatest commandment? Yeshua answered, the first is Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well said. The teacher. The Torah scholar said to him. You have spoken the truth. That he is a chad. And besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart. With all the understanding. And with all the strength. And to love the neighbor as oneself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Yeshua saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God, and no one dared any longer to ask him questions. So here we are. What does that mean to you? What is then following the teachings and the instructions mean to you? I pray that he would show us the importance of seeing that this is what the word of God has to say. Now, sometimes people start thinking, oh, you're a person who believes in legalism. You're just legalistic. No, my friend. For in the Torah reading, we find that Moses reminded Israel of the Sabbath and made sure that they kept the Sabbath holy unto the Lord, which God commanded. He speaks of a contribution as well. That should be given unto Adonai for the ministry work for those who have a generous heart. That's the main point. It's not just even the giving of the, the financial gifts because he gave gold and silver and all kinds of things. But it was the thing is the generous heart. What is it that you give to the father? Remember, the widow's might was a generous heart. That Yeshua said, even that small gift that that woman gave, she gave all that she had. And I'm not talking about necessarily donations to the ministry here or any other ministry. It is the heart of desiring to follow the teachings and the instructions 
of all that the scripture has from Genesis to Revelation. This is not a tithing. This is not a stewardship message. This is a message of where are we together today and hearing the word and saying, how can I apply the things that he wants for us in our lives? He wants, the Father wants his people to love him for who he is, not for what he can do for us. You love him just because he is. He would rather have us love him for we delight in him and that we are loyal. He would rather see that from our hearts and our lives than any kind of sacrifice that we can give burnt or any otherwise. He says, where is your heart? Knowledge of God is what he desires for us to have that. So whether it's celebrating Shabbat, or giving an offering to Adonai, it is never to be done or offered by a heart forced or hardened by a sense of compulsion. We are to follow the master and his teaching in the Torah, the, the Tanakh and the apostolic writings of the new covenant, because we love him and have a generous and willing heart for our Savior, Master, and Adonai. Paul the Apostle said that when he was walking in the power of the Spirit, it is clear that you are a letter from Messiah delivered by us, written not with ink, but the Ruach, the Holy Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts in 2 Corinthians in chapter 3. And also the apostle was thinking, I am sure, because he was a studier and studied the Torah and uh, the writings, he must have been thinking of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, that says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my mitzvot for length of days and years of life and shalom they will add to you. Let kindness and truth never leave you, said Proverbs. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Even in the Torah, even in the Tanakh, it spoke about the importance of doing these things from the heart of love and desiring to bless the one who has created us all. May we all look to him, to his instruction and commandments, and honor him in our lives. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining Olive Tree Community Spokane for today's message. Join us for 24-7 Messianic music and teaching just like this on Messianic Joy Radio. Go to live365.com or download the app Live365 and search for Messianic Joy. Shalom from Olive Tree Community, Spokane.